you know, I can practically hear the cheering and screaming that began as soon as you saw me walk on camera. And, and if you didn't cheer, I understand you're being respectful in the classroom atmosphere. I get that. So let me start by saying hello, greetings to my fellow Cougar artists. This message is actually coming to you from an entirely different country. I'm talking to you here from Canada, which is where I live. I'm currently quarantining. I came in contact with a person last week who tested positive for COVID-19. The good news for me is that as soon as I learned this, I went out and got my own COVID test and my test came up negative. So knock on wood, I'm still completely healthy. Now, the bad news for me is that I don't get to spend time in person with you, my miniature Michelangelo's. So the best I can do is communicate with you in this computer machine thing, which is not easy for me because old people and technology don't always go hand in hand. My cell phone is rotary. That's how old school I am. But I'm going to do the best that I can because communicating with you guys, I mentioned Michael Angelos, is very important to me. And a lot of times at the beginning of these videos or at the beginning of class, I refer to my students as miniature Michelangelo's or pipsqueak Picasso's or diminutive Da Vinci's. And reason, the reason that I'm doing that is because I'm comparing you to some of the greatest artists who ever lived. Michelangelo was an Italian artist who lived over 500 years ago. And some people say he is still the greatest artist ever. He did a lot of statues and a lot of paintings. And among all the statues that he did, one of them called the Pieta is my favorite. I think it's the greatest work of art ever created by anybody. Can you imagine making something like that by carving it out of stone? The man definitely had skills. But who knows, the next masterpiece may come from one of the students here at Rasset Point Elementary. So if you're ready to get started on your masterpiece, we'll begin. To start our picture today, you're going to need a sheet of unlined paper. You're going to need a pencil with a good eraser, and you're going to need a box of colored pencils or crayons. Don't color your picture with marker. I know marker is a lot of fun, but for our drawings, I prefer that you use either crayons or colored pencils or a combination of both. And if you don't have a good box of colors, you really should. We told you all the way back in September, even over the summer, that for our class, you're going to need a box of at least 12 good colors. So if you don't have some, maybe ask mom or dad or whoever it is who takes care of these things, if you can get a box of colors, because all the great artists like you start out with a good box of colors. And uh, since we were talking a little bit earlier about one of the great artists, Michelangelo, it got me thinking about his figures. And when you look at the figures that were done by Michelangelo in his statues and his paintings, they all look very muscular, very heroic, almost like superheroes. And it got me thinking about some of the superheroes that we have here in the United States. And the greatest superheroes of all are obviously teachers. All right, the more I think about it, maybe there are some professions that are even more heroic than teachers. And I think most people would agree that the most heroic profession of all the people out there right now are the doctors and the nurses who take care of us. Doctors like the one who gave me my COVID test and nurses like our own Mrs. Marks. Anytime you have any kind of health issue, who takes care of it? Mrs. Marks. She never says, no, stay away from me. I don't want to get sick too. Anything that you need to help you be safe and healthy, she takes care of. So in honor of these, uh, these heroic first line workers, I thought I would do a drawing today of one of those uh, medical health experts. And I'm gonna start by holding my paper the portrait way. That means up and down the way you hold your, uh, your paper when you're doing a homework assignment. And right in the middle near the top, I'm gonna draw a circle. And if your circle isn't perfect, that's okay because it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but I'm gonna draw the head and I'm gonna make it about the size of my fist, maybe a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit smaller. Don't trace around your hand because the head is gonna look all lumpy and you don't wanna have a lumpy head. So just lightly draw it. And I'm gonna draw with crayon, but you really should draw yours in pencil first until it looks right to you. And I'm gonna draw lightly. And if it looks good to me, then I can make it a little bit darker. And already I've got the head drawn. From here, I'm gonna come straight down, but maybe not right at the edge, maybe a little bit low inside. I'm gonna come down like this. It looks almost like a big lollipop or a match, doesn't it? And I'm gonna go almost down to the bottom. 
From there, I'm going to go straight across, almost to the edge, then straight down and straight back. Almost to the edge, then straight down and straight back. I come straight down again. I have my face and my lab coat. That much is already done. Now let's see. For the hand, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to make a little circle right at the end. Not too small. And then you put a thumb on top. Then you put three lines going across. One, two, three. Now my person has got fingers. One, two, three. And now my nurse or doctor has got his or her arms out. And a very welcoming gesture. Showing there's nothing to be afraid of. Now, about halfway down the lab coat, I'm going to draw a line for the waist. And right at the bottom, I'm going to draw a line that goes from the middle of the coat. Here's the coat right here. Right from the middle, I come straight down. And I go almost down to the bottom of the picture, then up to the middle of the body. Down again. And already my doctor has got legs. My doctor or nurse is going to need feet. So I'm going to start with a letter L like this. That comes down from the ankle and goes over, not too far. And then from here, I just put a curve right there. Now I can see my doctor's feet. Well, let's see what some other details we can put. I can give a U-shape right here, and then come straight down from there. Can you guess what I'm drawing right now? It is a stethoscope. And this is what the doctor uses to listen to your heartbeat, or your lungs when you're breathing. Just another detail to make our picture look a little bit more real. This is the top of the shirt. I'll give my person, let's see, right about in the middle of the face. I'm going to draw two circles for the eyes, but to make it look even more real, I'm going to put two circles or a curve right above and above that there's a curve and another curve and if I'm going too fast you can always slow down the video or watch it again. But I've already got eyes and eyebrows. Now I can either give a mask, which would be easier to draw. I could just draw a square right here to draw a mask on my doctor. But I'm going to put a smile on my doctor's face. I'm going to go straight across. Here's just a little curve for the nose. And then a triangle. Simple as that. I've got the face. I'll put a little curve on this side and a little curve on this side. Make this one a little bit bigger. See, this is why it's a good idea to draw lightly in pencil because with crayon, you can't make, you can't correct your mistakes as easily. Let's give our doctor some hair. So I'm just gonna draw a straight line right across the middle of the forehead and maybe a little bit of hair on this side and a little bit of hair on this side. 
if we want our doctor to look like a lady doctor, let's see what I can do. I can give, I can draw another line right here, like a headband, and then maybe give longer hair over here. And over here, maybe one, two, three eyelashes. And it's up to you whether you decide to draw a male doctor or a female doctor. I'm going to color the hair in now, and you can decide for yourself whether your doctor has black hair or brown hair, whether your doctor is a blonde, a boy or a girl. I'll put a little patch on her jacket. And the only thing we have to do at this point is add some color. So let's do that now. Well, now my nurse is in full color. I decided to make her hair brown. I, I colored the entire background with, with bright green to make that white jacket pop out even more. Plus, pictures always look a little bit better when you take time and you color, especially if you really take your time and you color neatly instead of scribbling. So when you color, go with little short coloring strokes instead of big, long, scribbly lines. Your picture will look a lot neater, and it will show that you really took your time and you take a lot of pride in your work. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you enjoyed working on your nurse or doctor picture. I can't wait to see your drawings. More importantly, I can't wait to see you guys. But until I do, until we get back together again, stay creative, stay safe, stay cougar strong. We'll see you soon.